So hello everyone and welcome to the Arcad Saga uh, for part two of this little uh, mini series where I do uh, put up uh, and transfer odontoglossum types arcades into cell watering. At least I think there are those are uh, odontoglossum types arcades. Could be some oncidium types as well. I, I, I sometimes I'm confusing them a little bit, but I think those are more classed as a uh, odontoglossum sort of type. But what I mentioned uh, yesterday was uh, that I want to do something different, a little bit different this time. I like to do a little experiments sometimes, not too much. If something is working I like to uh, stick to it. But um, sometimes I like to change things and uh, some, uh, yeah, that most of the times it happens when I see something and I have a sort of feeling that I think well maybe this could work or maybe this is uh, worth a try. And I had it with this uh, this product, product, but at least it's not specific the brand. This is the brand that I could find here in the Netherlands. But um, it's called a stack puder in in uh, in uh, in Dutch. But it uh, is um, come on, right? It's it's for um, seedlings, and I saw it in a video where, where they have carnivore plants, little carnivore plants, to get them to grow this has a hormone stuff, so root hormones. Uh, basically what I do with my seaweed, but then in a powdery form. It's not a f form, it's not really seaweed, but it uh, does contain hormones that are uh, good for uh, getting uh, roots to grow again. So, um, I just wanted to try this out, and I will put this in the pot, and then I, for at least a few weeks, probably a few months, maybe two or three, I only will water this, these plants with uh, our old water. pH down to a level of 6, 6.3, something there, and uh, see what this does. So that's a little bit different uh, this time. And I thought it would be nice to uh, film it and uh, to share this with you. It's a powdery stuff. I just opened it and it's really powdered. Let me open it again, quickly. And... Here we go, as you can see. So I uh, I thought it would come with a little spoon, plastic spoon, but it didn't, so I did uh, grab my own spoon. But um, yeah, so I will uh, put it in a pot, like I said. But before we do that, I uh, also want to show for those who are new on my channel, I have uh, a few new subscribers, so thank you for being here. What I do, this is uh, an outer pot. In this case, it's from the brand Alo. Uh, and I really like these pots. Those are most of the time not, not very cheap, but I must admit I really like uh, using them. And what I do, because this outer of this inner pot, which will uh, contain the argot in a minute and the pumice, goes fairly deep in, as you can see. We have a little bit of um, edge there. And I noticed, um, well, in my experience, that when once the, uh, the arcad is in with all the pumice, it's very hard to get it out again. So therefore, what I do these days is I have this um, thing. I, I'm so sorry, you guys, I don't know how to call this, but it makes holes in stuff. <laughs> Not specific plastic, it's more for leathery and clothes, I think. But it also uh, makes holes in plastic, nice round holes. So I like to use this one. I could use a hard, hot um, nail. But I don't uh, like the smell of it, so I try to avoid it as much as I can. So I wiggle it a little bit, and it's not completely going through, so I need to do it a little bit more. And yes, then we should be okay. And I have... I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for the wiggling of the camera. I have a nice little hole here, as you can see. So what I do now, I grab a cable tie. Of course, I have the black ones. I do love black. <laughs> and I will put it through that little hole like this. And basically making a loop. And I have my cutting tool here, I thought. I'm sorry, here it is. I will uh, get rid of the excess of the cable tie. I don't need that anymore. And now I have a sort of handle attached to the pot. And it's very easy for me now to get it, uh, the orchid out of the pot. I just can get it, the handle, pull it up slowly and then use my both hands to get it out. Especially when you have starting new roots. You don't want to 
move the orchid around too much so therefore I like to uh, like this setup I really can easily take it out and then we will install or put a uh, water meter I call them water meters um, into the pot I get the, the cap off most of you guys know why but for the new ones once again because these things these are the indicators of the water level they will go up when you water etc but they like to get stuck because I have the cheapest ones and but if they do now I know so I get the cap off and I can tap it with my finger and if it gets stuck it will go down and then I know I need to water if it bounces back straight away I know this this orchid doesn't need any water at this certain moment so that's how I use these water meters so let's uh, start putting this up and we have quite some uh, big holes in the pot so I like to uh, start with the bigger pumice I only will use pumice for these setups today sometimes I uh, use Cintiq but I think it's not needed for these type of orchids so um, I'm going to put in a layer of Cintiq um, sorry <laughs> pumice and I use, I'm going to use a lid because I don't have these trays, they are occupied now at the moment because of the orchids that are need to be occupied. But here we go. We will do it something like this. So we have a nice layer, and this is about the layer that will uh, cover the water. So if I have all the roots they will lay on top above the reservoir because otherwise they will probably start rot. Most of the, new, the roots will start rot. Uh, for the exception from uh, for new roots that will decide on their own to go into the reservoir. But if you have all the roots, already existing roots, most of the times they do not like to be in water. All the time. So therefore I do a uh, bottom layer and I dropped a bit of pumice. So let's grab the orchid and see how we are going to position it in the pot. Um, this is a new growing direction but also that one because we have a new growth here you can not see it but in the back where my hand is. <laughs> so I want to put it in the middle of the pot as much as I can. Ro lower it a little bit and I'm not being very handy because I still have the lid on. Maybe I can get it up with one hand. Yes, I think I can. Oops. There we go. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this hormone stuff. I have no idea how much we need to add in. I don't think we need much, to be honest. So I do put in a little bit, like that. Once again I have no idea if it works because this is the first time. But I like to, to give it a try and to see if I can see any differences. And now going for the small pumice. They like some air around the roots. These. Uh, um, these type of plants, but um, not too much. So I, I'm going to uh, use the bigger pumice and the smaller. But first a little bit of like this, the smaller, and then putting the roots in. Yeah, yeah. I will grab the bigger one now. So I keep some air in the pot around the roots. And I will do a little bit of this powdery stuff again. I really have no idea. Maybe I'm adding too much, I really have no idea, but there's only one way to find out for me just to test it and who knows maybe I found a 
a solution that really helps getting, getting them to go again, to root again. That's obviously the plan. Some small pumice again. We'll do a little bit more. And I will wiggle the pot, and while I'm wiggling the pot, I will pull up the arcs a little bit so the pumice get underneath those roots, underneath the bulbs. That's why I start with uh, lowering the a little bit too much in a pot and then I found this a very easy method to get a lot of pumice underneath the, uh, the roots as well. <coughs> Just a little bit of small pumice again I have a little bit more small pumice in there, which I like. Can we let it go? No. I was afraid of that, to be honest. It's a little bit top heavy still, so... I will put in a little bit more media. I might want to stake this up, but normally it stays into place. Especially when I put the top layer of pebbles around it. It's a bit heavier. So let's try that, and otherwise I need to uh, grab a steak very quickly. Um, yes, I can reach. So it's now standing on its own. I think we are okay, but I need to be very careful with this one. Yeah. No, it's not. Let me uh, grab a steak. I'm not happy with this. It's so heavy with uh, two less roots to support it and to get it stable in the pot. So I will be right back. So I did get my steak. And I like to use these ones, maybe uh, you recognize the point of it. It's used for knitting, sorry, a knitting needle, I'm not completely sure if they call it, but uh, if you get the cheaper ones, at least in, uh, in the Netherlands, these are hollow in size. So I could put a, a wooden um, stake in this if I wanted to, to support a bloom, uh, blooms. Uh, spikes I should say uh, later on, but these ones are coated so I don't have any rust or anything in the pots I used these for years and never had any problems So um, it's a fairly small one, but I just need a little bit of extra somewhere around the base of this orchid so I slowly going to uh, Put it in maybe on the other side of the orchid um, Yeah, I think I'm going to try to put it in here And just turning it um, in a circle motion and then uh, pushing it a little bit. So I try to uh, avoid breaking any roots. Now I have a bigger piece of pumice and I think it's stable enough. So let's grab some wire. I have this nice green wire. So you don't see it as a very very um, easy when it's around the plant. I like that. Put it around one bulb, and that will hold the orchid in place. At least that's the plan, of course. <laughs> and yeah, there we go. This is much better. It's a very heavy plant and we still have the spikes on, so those are 
uh, letting the arcade move even a bit more. But it should be fine like this. Oh yeah, this is way better. I hope you can see it. It's still a bit wibbling, but uh, wiggling around, but I don't get it out of it uh, quite often. So, this is beautiful. And once again now, already the uh, cable tie in the pot is very handy, so I can slowly put this arcet in its new pot. So, I will grab another one and I will give this a uh, little tag so I, don't, I, I do remember which one it is and then I will be back with another one. And now it's time for the second one and I did prepare uh, a few things already because we already saw it just with the first one. So I have my pot ready for the arcade to, to put in. I even have a wire and already a stake in. And because this one again it has a very long spike, it's the rusty colored one. Um, but it has two beautiful new growths, two di directions, so I try to put it in the middle of the pot and try to manage to get the roots around the stake uh, and in the pot of course. There's my handle that needs to stay into place. Um, it's not really Still have some roots out of the pot. This one had the most good roots, so I'm very curious to see how they will uh, behave. And I will put in a little bit of hormone before we go any further. Once again, I have really no idea how much I need to add. Probably add a little bit too much. I, I, I really don't know. Maybe I add a little too less. <laughs> Most of the times you do not need that much, especially with arcades. So I try not to overdo it, of course. And I want to stake this arcade right from the beginning. Try to stake it. So it's a bit easier for me to get a media in. If it wants to stay into place, I think it will. And for me, we ha I have quite a lot of ro uh, room to put in the, the media. Uh, uh, yeah, from behind the oven, basically. So, let's put in some small lacquer first. And then some bigger leka. A leka. I'm sorry. Promise you guys. Promise. <laughs> Strange. Whoops. I had in I had a little fight with the uh, spikes. Something like that. back for some smaller pumice. Put something in there that I need. And again a little bit of that rooting powder stuff. Now in the middle of the pot around areas where new roots start to grow. On the other hand, does it matter much? Because new roots do not uptake uh, water and fertilizer, etc. straight away. But maybe it's a bit different with hormones. I'm not completely sure. So I just try things and see. I don't know if I can notice any difference. But if you don't try, you never know. So. <laughs> And I think it's nice. I like uh, channels where we see uh, people trying stuff and maybe want to learn from it. And I like to share it with you guys. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm not all the time trying new things. Just 
only when I have a sort of feeling. I, and I had it with this, uh, this idea of putting powder, rooted powder in there, just uh, to see what happens. And I must admit, especially because they were using it on conifer plants, I have a few of them and they absolutely hate fertilizer, or at least when you've given them too much. So I thought, well, they can take it if they do so well on it. Why not try an orchid? Because orchids do like fertilizer, but also not too much, generally speaking. So, yeah. We shall see. A little bit bigger on it. Just to uh, keep some air around the roots. So, uh, yeah, I have quite a big hole there. I didn't notice it. Maybe you guys did. Normally, it's not that bad, but this is a little bit too much, I think. So I put in, we'll put in a little bit extra media. Um, let me see. Do I have a clean stick? Yes, I have. This one is dry. So I try to push in a stake and then pull the roots back a little bit. I hope you can see it so the media will fall down a bit easier. I need to uh, put in a little bit of small palmers there because too much space, too much air is not good as well. And I like to use these stakes so I can dab the media downwards a little bit easier. Then, uh, then with my fingers. I don't have very large fingers, but still, <laughs> it's a bit easier. And just a little bit. That should do. Yeah, we still have some air gaps, but I don't mind those. I leave them. I think the arcs do like a little bit of extra air around the roots. Oh, I already have petals here. They can go back. Like that, and that is number two. At least put it up, and I have a same outer pot for this one as well. So I'm going to put it in very slowly, very gently, and there we go. So this is a number two. And I will show them all, th all, all three of them in the end of the video. This one, as you can see, is the one with the very long spike. So, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to clean this up and I will come back with the third one and the last one for this uh, session. And here we are again. Same situation, different pot. This pot is a little bit bigger because the orchid is a bit bigger. And I do now put in straight away a little bit of uh, rooting powder. So I have it also centered and it's easier to put in, as you can see probably, uh, than when you have the orchid already in there. So, yeah. But anyhow, it's in there both times, so, uh, but it's a bit easier for me. This one is fairly big as well. Uh, fairly strong with big bulbs. And it does have a flower spike, so maybe I can stake the flower spike to keep the arc a bit more in place and no, this is not, not working. I did break the rhizome there so therefore it's falling over. But I put it back. I don't want to uh, I don't need two plants of this so I will uh, keep it as one. But hmm, let me see. I have a sort of clipper thing here. I don't know how to call it, so I call it a clipper thing. <laughs> um, around here, I think. Yeah, this is one is a bit difficult. More difficult because it's fairly heavy and big. But I'm slowly going to put in more colors. 
try to be as careful as I can with those root tips. And I'm putting some pumice on the floor. It's not the end of the world. And let's see, let's grab a little bit. We have a rooting powder. Put it in there like that. Oops. Um, I don't think I need small pumice actually for this one. This one has a little bit of bigger roots. So I think I'm going to stick with a thicker uh, pumice. Because it's also a fairly large pot and I, like I said, they like some air. So I'm going to uh, only put in uh, the bigger uh, pumice, like I said. I don't know why, but I have a feeling that's a bit better for this one. Yeah, based it on the, on the root size, plant size as well. But I think... This one uh, can do with the, uh, with the bigger colors, like I said. Yeah, this one needs to be staked. Of tied to the uh, state, I should say. I'm going to use both bulbs. So yeah, I did damage the rhizome there a little bit, but the rhizome is fairly high in the pot, so I will keep an eye on it if it doesn't start to uh, rot. But it's still attached, so technically it's one plant, but yeah. I want to keep it as one plant at least. It's this part, it's already starting a new growth, so maybe it was a natural dividing point. But anyhow, I kept it uh, like this. Because I like very big bushy plants. And yeah, I think I'm going to uh, put in the top layer of... Uh, Petals. But before I do, I will do a little bit of powder, rooting powder uh, on the top as well, like I did with the other ones. So that makes it a bit nicer project, I think. Try to get it as even as I can. Once again, I found it very hard to know how much I need to do, put in, I should say. But yeah, if you never try things, you never learn. So. That is this. Let me put a lid on. It's very, very dusty. And just pebbles. Beautiful. I personally love pebbles. I like to really like the look of it. This is an idea from uh, coming from Annabelle's artist. And I uh, did copy it and I had the same results as he did. It works fantastic. So I keep doing, uh, putting in uh, a pebbles and you may think, why do you do that? Well, first of all, it's to prevent uh, the top dry layer from happening. Sometimes we have cell watering, but then the top dry layer, layer is created, especially in summer. So the, uh, the water evaporates or it's not getting to the top at least at the pot. That's basically what is happening. By putting pebbles on top of it, you prefer, uh, yeah, you keep um, water more in the pot. It cannot evaporate as quickly because the pebbles are above it. So that's really is helping. Then I like the look of it. Personal taste of course. And it makes the pot a little bit heavier and especially with these big orchids they don't fall over quite, uh, quite easily if you have an outer pot like that grey one. But still it makes the pot a bit heavier where the orchid is sitting in. That is also a plus for me. Especially with the uh, I'm sorry for the noise, especially with, uh, with these guys that, that like to make very long and heavy spikes. So, benefits, different benefits there, if you ask me. And let me quickly check. You might see another new growth starting. No, not new growths, but new roots. So, I will uh, get the sheet off and i show it to you guys in a minute. My uh, scissors is sterilized, so I can use it. I always have it ready to go for in this type of 
situations where I need a scissor. I didn't couldn't uh, I didn't cut it. I couldn't get the leaf completely off, but let me show it to you guys. Right above my finger, I hope you can see it. We have new roots started. I thought it was a new growth, but it isn't. But it is. Uh, those are new roots. Very welcome as well, of course. <laughs> so I thought I'm going to give you a little bit more room. And now I have a uh, same sort of pot, just a little bit bigger. This is the 18 centimeters, so it's a fairly big pot for a fairly big orchid. Let's put it in very gently, as gently as we can. There we go. And you can see here the new growth. I'm really happy with that. That's the future for this orchid, of course. <laughs> um, let me grab the tag. Oh, I didn't make the tag for this one yet. Let me quickly uh, make it. How did I call this one? Oh, that dark red, yellow lip. Dark red, yellow, yellow lip from Landsbergen Open House. And we call that a open dag. And I will put something extra on this, on the back of the label. This is a Project Root Powder. I did uh, do that and that's why I'm showing you the tag so you don't, so you know I don't, uh, I, I will not mess this up by showing you other orchids in the future and saying that, that those were included. But these three guys did it, get this on the back of their uh, tags. So we all know now that these three have rooting powder in the pots. I think it's a nice uh, little project, so let me know if you will enjoy this type of videos. And I only do project if I have a certain feeling, if I really want to test it. I'm not going to make it for the sake of uh, having more videos out there, because to be honest you guys, I have so many videos ready. I need to slow it almost a little bit down, but I have a lot of up potting coming and etc. I'm just going to film them, or at least quite often, uh, quite most, most of them I should say. But anyhow, that's a different story. But um, yeah, I do only do projects if I really want to know and I like to have some input. So if you are having some information about it, some thoughts, please feel free to share it with all of us. Not only with me, but all uh, you guys who read the comments. I think that's very nice. So I will take my camera off the tripod and we will have a last look at these three. And then that will be the end of this video. So in here they are, all three of them, put it up. And this was the first one, second one, and the third one. And you can see this one is a bit has a bit uh, bigger pot. And also these guys have root powder project on the back of their text. Uh, as has this one. So I've shown it you to you guys, all of them, very quickly. So you know I uh, do not cheat. <laughs> and uh, before I forget, the working. Um, chemical, no not chemical, a working hormone, I'm sorry, is here. I hope you can read it. It's in Dutch, it's Indoli, Indoli Botersuur. I will put it in English in the screen as well, so we know. And that's the stuff that should be uh, helping to get uh, new roots on these orchids fairly quickly. And I do believe that this stuff is also in the seaweed. But on top of my head, I'm not really sure. I will look it up and I will let you know in the, in the screen. But this is uh, for you guys who want to know. And this is the brand that I'm using. But again, I have no idea if this is going to work. I accidentally put a bit of that uh, stuff on the root. I don't know if, they, if it's hurtful for the root. It shouldn't be, it's, I think, especially... With, uh, when you work with seedlings and conifer plants, conifer seedlings, I can only imagine they, those are fairly hard to grow, especially when you try to uh, fertilize them or give them too much in a pot. But anyhow, if these guys, these three, get a, uh, a root, uh, get root bound uh, in the pot, let's say within a year, now, yeah, half, yeah, six months to a year, something like that. Shall we then say it's working? 
because yeah that's the, another question when do we know if it really is working yeah that's a good question I don't I don't I'm just going to see uh, what they do and if I really have different results you never know but what I'm now going to do is uh, only uh, water them for probably two months at least with only our old water that is pH down to uh, 6 to 6.3 and go from there if they really have getting roots bigger roots then after that they may want to uh, uptake some fertilizer again but now I don't think they will uh, they do not need much because they are basically in shock and then need to uh, start growing again new roots like I said earlier do not uptake uh, fertilizer when they just starting to grow they need a little bit of while to, uh, to mature and then they will start working so no point in putting these guys in too much fertilizer. The roots, the older roots as well, yes, they can take uptake fertilizer, but they probably will not do it now because like, once again they are stressed. So I will give them some time to uh, recoup, I think. And we did leave the spikes. I still have the spikes on as you can see here and here and here. So uh, let's see what uh, those spikes will do if they stay green or start to brown up quite quickly. I will uh, we'll do updates. So uh, please let me know if you like this uh, type of video. Maybe you did uh, some experience uh, on uh, rooting powder yourself. Please let me know. I'm very curious to know. And um, yeah, this is uh, for now. I I, uh, I think this is a nice little series and just uh, trying out some new stuff. And who knows? Who knows? We found something, uh, a new beautiful product to work with. For now, thank you guys for watching and I really hope to see you at one of my next videos. Bye-bye.